Hi, welcome back everybody. It's Mike Newton down here at Lytham Golf Academy. We're going to take a look at the Homna Irons offering today in this review and we've got three of their model and in particular the 747 range. So we've got the P iron, we've got the V iron and then we've got the VX iron. So I'm going to hit all three, all seven irons, GC quad on the floor. We're going to look at some data, some numbers and obviously give you some feedback of feel, looks and maybe the type of golf that these eight irons are aimed at. Okay, so Homna Irons. Obviously, Homna as a brand are coming into uh, definitely the European market and probably worldwide. They're sort of branching out and obviously signed some big players, Justin Rose, and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be other big players on the horizon also. So, again, it's that premium, it's that high end sort of price point, and they're offering a, three different models here in the 747 range, which are probably hitting different types of golfer. We're going to start off with the P iron, so the TW, which stands for uh, Tour World. 747p okay and this is the cast head this is the more um, game improvement iron in a way the more bigger appearance um, it's a cast head it's got some tungsten in there which we'll talk a little bit about and a little bit more aimed at probably that sort of um, high single figure to maybe sort of higher handicapper who's really looking for a little bit of forgiveness but also a little bit of distance okay so i've got myself set up at 180 from the flag Again, this is a seven iron, as I mentioned. We'll hit some shots and we'll see how this P iron performs. That was a lovely ball flight. It's an explosive one. That really come off the club face pretty, what looked to be pretty fiery. It's okay, so that's just hitting that right half the green. Nice start. Felt good. Acoustics first sound of that felt, it all sounded really nice. Didn't Wasn't too brash or very loud sometimes you see with game improvement irons they feel very or the acoustics are very loud explosive sort of sound that wasn't massively loud that that feels lovely again very similar flight to that first one just a touch straighter that's good now this is a seven iron, so this is lofted in at 28 and a half degrees of loft, so it's strong. It's in that very strong bracket. Um, so typically here we're going to see some longer distances, which is why I've set myself out 180 yards here from the green, and probably going to see some low spin numbers here. So, but it's definitely aimed for that golf who just wants to get some more ball speed, some more yards, um, with a little bit of forgiveness. That's the sort of type of golf for this. Really, is probably aiming at. I feel so strong off the club face. Feels like it's going miles that. Just pulled that one a little bit. So that'll probably go long and left. Yeah, there we go. There's a long one. And I know I've pulled that a little bit there. We know the pulls go slightly longer, but that's gone a long way. You know, we've run out there. What's that? Carrying at 185, running out to 198. That's, <laughs> that's not coming in with a lot of spin. It's not going to want to stop that. That's the only downside to these types of irons. But again, there's a lot of golfers out there that they don't mind that they don't mind that running on them they probably haven't got enough length to actually reach the green with a particular line and they just want it to kick on and run on so you know if that's the type of golfer who wants that then this is this is sort of ticking a box it feels incredibly easy to hit and there is such a high towering flight for a strong lofted club and I, I like the sound of that for a game improvement iron that is not loud at all so we've got tungsten in the bottom of the club here in all the irons through the set so that's lowering that cg obviously that creates that higher sort of ball flight we've got a 3d uh, sort of emblem in the back there um, which is actually a dampening uh, tune so that's dampening any sound which i think he's doing a great job there because the sound of that is really really nice we've got a little cavity at the bottom of the club and an appearance down by the ball it's a sort of large profile it's large from sort of blade length from heel to toe bit of offset there sort of a medium to thickish top edge but but a nice shape it's not it doesn't look massively chunky when you sit that down by the ball which is good okay we're just gonna hit one more shot well, that was a tiny bit low but that's just so high towering ball flight it's got up away nicely and it's still a good good distance with that even with that slight low in the face strike okay so that's the 747 p iron the cast head 
We're going to move into now the forged offerings with the two other models and we'll, uh, we'll work it from there. Okay, so now switching in the 747 in the VX. So we're now going to the forged head, but we're still keeping that little bit of forgiveness in the head. So I think always an iron that I feel is very popular for a lot of golfers. It ticks a lot of boxes. We've got that forged look, that very sort of classic or started to look in that classic chrome finish, which a lot of golfers sort of aspire to be using, but generally aren't good enough ball strikers to do so. So that's when they need that little bit of forgiveness in there. Again, we've got a little bit of tungsten in this club also to help with that MOI. So really that forged players feel, but with that real good forgiveness and still a little bit of distance okay so let's get this one give his first one a hit should hopefully see a little bit of difference of a feel this going into the forged head now and a little bit of difference on that Q sticks oh that's a bit of a thinny first one it's very straight I've just moved myself back five yards there yeah it's coming a little bit low a little bit clean that um, so I'm 175 yards from the green because the loft on this 7 iron now is 30 degrees. So obviously we're going up a little bit in loft, but it's still in that strong bracket. So um, again, it's, it's that distance looking golf club, but you've got that looks and feel a little bit more towards a player's iron. That's better. That's a lovely ball flight. Again, it's high towering. Feels really good. You can tell that difference between that, that forged and the sort of cast head with the, again that acoustics and also the feel feels a little bit more softer as you'd expect still good distance there. would be interesting to look at spin numbers uh, with these three models oh just pulled that one a fraction there again strike was good feels superb yeah that's that long pulley one which i did have with the with the p iron that was a bit of my weaker shot creeps in there Again, there, just protecting that, just pushing that fraction. So I'm sitting that down by the golf ball. It's definitely a neater package compared to what we see with that PI and as you'd expect. So a bit thin on that top line, a little bit less offset, more of that polished chrome, um, more of that classic iron sort of finish that you'd expect and a tiny bit shorter from that heel to toe so blade length just gets a little bit short so ultimately it's just getting a slightly small smaller package we've got 10 grams of tungsten in the three iron to eight iron i think it is in the toe section you see that little shaded part just underneath the number seven there that is base of the tungsten that's just inserted so again pulling weight into that toe section could just controls that center of gravity in the club head again just creating a little bit more forgiveness on those miss hits okay that was a decent line there and that's yeah that's up there again don't look to be stopping massively quick there on those greens again we'll look at some some of those spin numbers but we are still really in that stronger loft bracket yeah, so definitely probably an iron that is going to be working for that golfer who still wants some forgiveness, still wants that distance, but likes that softer forged feel and that slightly more neat to compact look. Okay, let's move on to the 747V iron. So 747V iron, so very, very similar look to the VX. I think without having them side by side, you probably think they're the same iron, but there is some subtle little changes here with that little V of the weight in the bottom back section of the club has just now moved a little bit more into the center or a bit more behind the actual sweet spot when the VX is a little bit more out in that toe. So that's the difference there. We lose that little bit of tungsten now in the toe section, which we saw in the VX. Still forged, still got that same um, sort of chrome finish. It's a double plating on the chrome. And again, it's a lovely look, a little bit more compact again very little offset now medium to sort of thin top line so we're getting in very much in that player's sort of look okay let's get his first one hit oh that feels amazing again that forge feel lovely feels really good so again i've I've just moved myself another five yards further to this green so i'm now 175 uh, sorry 170 from the green uh, because the loft on this uh, 7 iron now is 32 degrees so we've gone two degrees weaker than the the vx 
um, and a good three and a half degrees weaker than the P iron. So it's still a little bit on that stronger side. I expect that loft to maybe at least be sort of 33, if not 34 in this, what Homner calling their ultimate um, forged iron. Now we know they do a Rose Pro Toe, Justin Rose's iron, which I'm guessing will be probably in that 34, 35 um, bracket there. But I, thought, I just I did expect this to be a little bit more loft, but um, it is what it is. Good. Just a tiny bit heavy on that. Might see if that drops off a little bit. No, it hasn't actually, has it? No, it still hit that target there and still got its distance, which is good. So we should start to see a little bit more of a spin number with this, hopefully. With that little bit more loft and that sort of player's iron that you'd sort of try and expect to see is a bit more of that control of the spin. And that comes into land on the green, so not ultimately a massive distance, but look, start to get a little bit more in that control aspect. Looks of it is lovely behind that golf ball. I do like the shape of that. Get a little bit clean if I'm getting picky on that strike. Just slightly on that left edge. So what we're seeing slightly different on the sole now is it's a little bit more chamfered off on the front e edge of that sole there. So what Common was saying is a little bit of a, an improved turf interaction compared to the other models that the sort of better player tends to sort of want to see. So then the better player would sort of get more down and sort of compress it, maybe get a little bit sort of steeper on it as they're trying to play those maybe low ball flights. So this sole is sort of helping with that club as it enters that turf and trying to get the club working back out again. So it's not massively sharp on that leading edge, so it's not going to dig too much. It's got that little, that sole that will help the sort of the club to, you know, enter them, then sort of come back out of the sole quite smoothly. Yeah, really nice feel to that. Definitely that forged feel, that acoustics is, is, is really good. It's hitting the right acoustics that I would want out of an iron. Okay, so we'll get one more hit and then we'll go and look at some numbers. Slightly push there, it's gonna catch that right edge. All right, center of the green, that's all right, yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, that feels really, really nice. Obviously, for me, I prefer that smaller look of this uh, V iron, the last one I've just hit, and obviously the feel and the playability of it, but that's for me. But I think Pomno giving some irons there, hitting different levels of golfers. But go on, let, let's look at those numbers a little bit more detail and see maybe what sort of spin number you'd be looking at, the sort of distance number, and also the looks of the golf club. Okay, so looking at some numbers, so we've got the P iron on the top, which we'll look at first. So we know this is a 28.5 degree loft, so it is strong. So we're expecting some bigger ball speeds here. So just short of 125 on average with the ball speed. They're launching at 17 and spinning at 5,600 as average. So typical number you'd expect to sort of see it's a strong loft. We're going to take a little bit of hit on that, on that spin. But it's not the lowest spinning one, if I'm going to be really sort of... Uh, picky on it, you know, I have seen 28 and a half degree seven irons before and obviously with other brands and they are spinning less than that So that's not massively low considering the loft. Don't get me wrong It is a low spin number for a seven iron But for the, again for what I was mentioned for, for the type of golf that's working into is that really a massive issue for that type of golf or maybe not? Okay Looking at peak height 35, so it's climbing really quite high in there, you know, launching at 17.4 and carry distance at 180 yards. Then moving into the VX iron, so as we know, this went to 30 degree for the 7 iron, so we expect to see a little bit less ball speed because it's, a, it's a more of a slanted back loft. So 128.8, sorry, 122.8 on ball speed, so a little bit less than what we saw in the P-Iron. Launched a little bit lower, to be honest. I mean, I did get that first one there. You can see that 14.7. If I just disable that shot for now, let's have a look at what that does to that uh, launch. Yes, yeah, so that goes up to sort of 16.2 there. That was a little bit of a thinny one. I'll, I'll 
Uh, spin number there, you can see 5728. So I thought it might be a little bit more of a jump that com compared to the uh, P iron. Obviously, my strike will just change that a little bit there, but it, it's only just popped up on average a little bit more there. Peaking at 32, so not quite as high as the P iron, and obviously a little bit shorter on the distance there through that slight bit of spin, but obviously that less ball speed at 176. So still a good sort of number there, but still a bit, bit low on that spin number for me personally. Moving into the V iron, so this is the more compact one, 32 degrees of loft we saw on this one now, so again ball speed just drops a little bit more because of the loft. Launching around that sort of 16 mark, again I caught that 15.3 there, a little bit of a thinny one, a little bit low in the face. Spin numbers jumped up massively, so you see 6801, some bigger sort of spin numbers um, in there. And a, a couple of maybe uh, uh, sort of drop-offs in terms of what I'm hitting to drop-offs, you can see it gives me six yards difference there from that 6.1 to 7.2. Bit of a difference there, again my strike, that was a little bit clean on that, that um, one it launched at 15 degrees, so clearly caught that a little bit low in the face, which has caused that. Um, so maybe a little bit of a rogue on that, to be honest, just again purely through my strike. Uh, so averaging at 169, carry, so we'd expect it'll be the shortest one of those three models. Okay guys, so there's the Homna TW747 range of irons. We've got the P, we've got the VX, and then the V. So three different irons, suiting different levels of golfers, different lofts in terms of what that golf is looking for, different head shapes, sizes, feels, acoustics, everything like that. So um, suiting a bit, pretty much all range golfers from that scratch golfer, that very good, you know, pro level golfer, all the way up to that sort of high handicapper with that P iron. So let me, let me know your comments down below with the Homna range, is that something you would go out and try? It is more in that premium price bracket, so obviously it's not everybody's cup of tea, but um, I think feel-wise, performance, it's, it's good. Um, you know, obviously we've got different shaft options through fitting um, to go through, which again, I can't stress enough, the importance of getting fitting is, is, is crucial, so make sure you're not just buying these blind, please, I hope you're not doing that. You know, do go and see your local fitter, get these irons hit, with a launch monitor to look at some numbers and make a really good calculated choice of what iron you're going to make you know just spend your good money on basically um thanks very much for watching as always if you haven't subscribed and you're enjoying the videos i'm putting out then, then please do so it allows me to get product lights a little bit quicker so hopefully i can get reviews out for you comparisons and everything like that so you know smash that subscribe button hit that bell icon also follow up on social media platforms both instagram and twitter handles there are at mngolfcoach and hopefully we'll catch up you all very soon.